Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to replace the LCD screen on the Creality resin printer. I got beta hardware, so keep that in mind. This is pre-release beta hardware, and my LCD died. So they sent me a new LCD panel, and we're going to replace it. Stay tuned. Well, the first trick is figuring out how to take it apart. I have to figure out how to get this piece out and that is a little tricky so I've taken all the bolts off to remove this panel but I can't completely remove this panel because the front LCD screen is attached by a ribbon cable which I could disconnect and the power cable is attached and the leads aren't very long so Creality what I would like to see you do is to cut those wires right there and put a JST connector in its place so that that can be unplugged because right now this is really hard to take apart it looks like the top is attached to these aluminum supports I noticed the bottom was attached to them and I believe these two screws go into the aluminum supports and so would these two screws the problem is how is this attached I really don't want to be messing with this if I can help it because this is all perfectly aligned so as you'll discover in a second, you don't have to do any of this disassembly that I just did to replace the LCD screen. This is beta hardware. I had no instructions, so I took guesses. I assumed I had to take it apart to get to it, but no. You can remove four screws and one ribbon cable, and then use a spudger to remove the LCD panel from the outside without taking the machine apart at all. Very well done. So I figure we might as well explore while we're in here. It looks like I can just remove these four top screws. And this whole assembly comes off with the shroud. Okay. See the little shroud there? That takes from the, here's your fan, your heat sink, your UV emitter down there. That little white square circuit board down there. That's the UV light. Okay. This is your... Um, your shroud that surrounds the LCD screen keeps all that light here Okay, and then your LCD screen up top Here's your brain board your USB connection Your power supply. I actually don't think you need to remove any of this It looks like you can open this hatch on the side here. This is the hatch right here with four screws and then you can gain access to this connection here. But it's under this tape. So this connection down here attaches, I believe this is the only thing that attaches the top there. Not a fan of this tape. I'm afraid of damaging something. Okay, there's the connection. This is kind of new to me, so we're exploring this together. Okay, got the tape off. Okay, is that just a, a seated connection there? Yes, it is. Okay, there. So now this top is disconnected. I believe the only thing left connecting it is the stepper motor and these wires. But hopefully those wires have enough play. I also took the back off here so we can look inside. The exhaust fan for electronics. It looks like it actually connects by USB. Or is this just going to... Ah, this is going to this. That's how they route it from the front to the back. So your USB connection here actually goes behind the circuit board and it comes to here, this USB connection right here. Interesting. Is there any memory card socket on this? I don't see one. Okay, so that's a nice easy connection. Do be careful, that is a crazy delicate connection. So to put that back on, you're going to line it up and it just snaps into place. You can actually feel it seat back into place and that's it that's connected to get it off you just put your fingernail underneath here and just give it a little click and it pops right off and that is your connector for your LCD screen right there so that actually looks like they did put some thought into this I'd like to see these wires be a little longer so you have a little more playroom here um, so it looks like you do not need to remove any of the, what I've removed here um, I had no instructions, so I just had to play it by the seat of my pants. Um, so all you need to do is remove these four screws to remove this panel, remove the tape and disconnect your LCD screen. 
Then you remove these two screws and the matching two screws on the other side, which connect to these aluminum pillars here. And then that's it. This assembly comes off, and you probably can't take it off all the way because you have these short wires here. All right, so we're probably going to tilt it back. And my guess is we're going to have to unbolt the aluminum shroud here to gain access to remove the LCD screen. So it looks like they actually did put some thought into that. Give me a moment while I actually perform that function. Okay, I have removed the four screws from the top, and the top does pop open. But I did have to loosen these two screws and these two screws a little bit. It's like it's pinching the top and holding it in place. So I just backed these screws out just a tiny bit, and that allowed me to pop the top off because it looks like it does latch in here right there so that can hold a little tight and it does look like the screen is that easy to replace they have a stepper damper on the z-axis i wonder why that's not necessary this shouldn't be i doubt it moves fast enough to be an issue although that is the only stepper motor that really moves on this machine so the whole thing tilts back do be careful with these wires you don't want to stretch them too far Looks like these four screws here come out, the shroud will remove, and then I should be able to remove the LCD screen. Give you guys a look down view inside the shell here. So you have the steel base with these four aluminum posts that everything screws into, the side screw into it, the bottom screws into it, everything. So the top through these holes, sides through these holes, and then there's two bolts on the bottom, most likely to keep these from twisting. There is your very large heat sink and your LED emitter. That is an atrocious solder job, Creality. I mean, uh, I, I don't have much room to talk when it comes to bad soldering, but that's a bad solder joint. Interestingly, this is 12 volts. That's kind of cool. So this is a 120 watt 12 volt power supply. Uh, I don't know who makes it, but it's obviously passive since it's not putting out all that much power. That's interesting to know. So you could power this off 12 volts, which means solar powering this would actually be pretty easy. A battery and a solar panel could run this thing. Hmm. There's your input power. There's your cooling. So you have cooling on the bottom. It is a proper heat sink. You know, it's got veins on there. I am not going to mess with any of that, of course. I figured you guys would want to see this. I thought it was pretty neat. So there's nothing actually holding the LCD in place. You might be able to replace the LCD without even taking the top off. Although my hunch tells me that will pinch it. But it's adhesive holding it down. So I very gently put my chisel in here and just pried up at the edge and worked it down. And then I was able to remove the LCD screen. I did crack it getting it off. So you don't want to remove the LCD screen as an experiment because you will very likely damage it in the process. I want to leave some of this adhesive behind. It would be nice if replacement LCD screen included replacement adhesive so I could remove all this adhesive and have a good proper connection for the new LCD screen. Oh, there is glass there. Okay, so we are going to want to be careful with that. There is a piece of glass in here. And you probably don't want to get an all fingerprinted like I just did. So I'm going to have to work on. And that does not come out. At least not easily. So be careful not to break that glass. Because this is the part you're replacing. Okay. Interesting that it's metalized on this side. Huh. That is interesting. So I'm going to carefully clean this glass before I put the new screen on. Okay, I used a Q-tip with some 91% alcohol and then a microfiber cloth, and I cleaned it, including the other side. As you can see, the glass is nice and clean. Now, there is a slot right here, and that slot is where your wires feed through to allow the attachment of your LCD panel, okay? But first, we have to remove the protective film that comes on this. That went in a lot easier than I expected it to. I was expecting a little trouble, but that just... That fit right in there, no problem. Now, we're not going to connect this yet because we still need to open this up. And reattach the shroud behind this panel here. Now, the other thing I'm going to look at is, could I have done this without removing the top at all? I 
I believe the answer just might be yes. You might not have to open up the top of this machine at all to replace the LCD screen. You might be able to simply open up this panel, pop off the cable, and it looks like this will not actually pinch this. Which means you can remove the LCD screen without opening this printer at all. That is actually quite excellent. I'm very pleased by that. So, in, I'm going to verify that in a moment. But it looks like remove these four panels, remove the tape, pop off the connector, pry off the LCD screen. That's why I couldn't push it from underneath, by the way, because there's glass there. I didn't realize that. It's a good thing I didn't try pushing harder. <laughs> Um, so it looks like none of this is necessary. You don't have to take it apart at all, but it was cool for us to do it Oh, and you can see how shiny this thing is inside It is literally a mirror finish That's cool So I'm going to reassemble this and I'll be back now if you do decide to take this apart for fun When you put this back on you are going to need to loosen the bolt that's holding that stepper damper in place It is right here because this actually sits underneath the stepper damper slightly and if you don't get it underneath this may distort in shape and that might change the distribution of your UV light. You don't want to do that. So if you decide to take this apart, make sure you loosen that bolt so that this goes underneath of there like it's supposed to and then retighten it when you're done. Otherwise you should be fine. And yes, I do confirm that does not pinch it. So you do not need to open this at all to change the LCD screen at all. All you have to do is open this side panel, pop off the ribbon cable, pry up the old LCD screen, drop in the new LCD screen, sliding this into place down to here, and then reconnect it and put this panel back in place. That's easy. <laughs> so hopefully they'll sell these LCDs really cheap. So to reinstall the top, if you decide to remove this top, it does latch in the back. So tilt it slightly to the back, latch the back, and then just push each corner in until they drop into place, and then you're good to go. You can put your four bolts back in. Don't forget to retighten your stepper damper bolt that you loosened to take off that shroud. But yeah, that's sitting in there good. All we gotta do is now reconnect it. All right, LCD's plugged back in. Tape is reapplied, and I pushed it down around the outside onto the board. The idea is that tape will keep that plug from coming undone as you see it did not take much force to remove that plug um, be careful pushing on this as you can see the board moves you don't want to break anything um, because I removed the top I then retightened these two screws and the two on the other side but once again to change the LCD screen on this you don't need to do any of that all you need to do is remove this panel four screws those four screws right there very carefully peel back the tape pop off the ribbon cable use something like um, I used a chisel but also a, um, a wedge like you would use to take apart a cell phone would probably also do the same thing run it along the edge to pop up the glue and then gently peel it back it'll come off the glue is not that strong um, slide the old LCD out slide the ribbon cable for the new LCD into the slot no you cannot attack that cable rah, rah. <laughs> cat was going after the ribbon Slide the ribbon in, make sure it's not kinked so that it reaches down here. Set your new LCD into place, at which point you can then remove the plastic film protecting the LCD, which is, of course, a pain in the butt to get my fingernails underneath. There we go. New LCD is ready. Verify that the glass underneath was clean so I didn't mess that up. It is plugged in. I'm going to put the panel back on. We're going to power up and we're going to see if I get my calibration pattern. And there you go. I have a proper calibration pattern. My LCD is working. My LD002R is back in action. Now we shall begin a test print. Don't forget to... um. I would advise replacing the USB drive that comes with these, especially since the one I got came with it, it was bad. But um, get these little SanDisk drives, they're like six bucks a piece. And the cool thing about these little SanDisk drives is that they barely stick out on the side of the machine here. So you don't have to worry about breaking your USB port when you bump into this thing. So that's a nice little drive for these machines. I'm going to now do a test print and I will show you that when it's done. And for those who are curious, I was also curious, the Photon screen is identical to the Creality screen. Exact same screen. 
no difference whatsoever. Same exact ribbon cable, same exact plug, and the photon screen comes with a little adhesive too. So, um, Creality's might come with it as well. They sent me this as a replacement part for mine. So you can buy a photon screen, and I'm guessing that the Mars uses the exact same screen as well. So I have one of those lying around somewhere too, so I have two extra screens, which is nice. Well, it's all working again. I printed out a Naomi, and I printed out a QSN in black, which really came out really cool. And this time I didn't break off the bottom taking away the supports, so this one's actually intact. But there you go, easy as that to replace the LCD screen on the printer. You guys have a great day.